Today's video is sponsored by The Daily Upside, a totally free, high quality daily business and finance newsletter. Visit the link in the description to learn more. Brazil and Argentina made a recent announcement that they're considering the idea of a common currency between the two countries and that they would hope to eventually invite other Latin American nations to join the union in a move that could someday create the world's second largest currency bloc next to the euro. Brazil has suggested that the new currency could be named the Sur, meaning South, and that it could boost trade within the region and reduce regional reliance on the US dollar. The idea, as it's been expressed so far, is that the new currency would at first run in parallel with the Brazilian real and the Argentine peso, at first being limited to use in trade, not unlike the way the euro was initially launched. Argentina's economy minister described the project to the FT as the first step on a long road which Latin America must travel. Brazil's president told reporters in Buenos Aires earlier this week at a summit that he was attending that God willing the finance ministers and leaders of the two central banks would have the intelligence, competence and good sense to begin work that could eventually produce a common currency. Now, Brazil and Argentina have discussed the idea of a common currency in the past, but nothing much has ever come from it. Economists have been very skeptical about this idea since it began being discussed a few weeks ago, but political analysts have been much more positive, pointing out that Latin America's mostly left-wing leaders have an urge to move towards greater regional integration and might want to challenge the US dollar's dominance in the region. Now that both Brazil and Argentina have left-wing leaders, there might be greater political interest in an idea like this, but it's not obvious to me that this is much more than political signaling for the time being. To begin with, policymakers in neither country will be excited about giving up power to the other nation. But possibly more importantly, an argument over whether they put Maradona or Pele on the highest denomination banknote is likely to lead to an argument that brings the whole project to a halt. There are just some things that are more important than politics or money in Latin America. At present, there's no real detail to the plan. It's just something that has been put forward and the two countries have agreed to begin analyzing the requirements for putting a common currency into place in the region. And that analysis includes everything from understanding the mechanisms of trade integration, fiscal policies, and the role of the two central banks. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there's been a general move to the political left in Latin America, and most left-leaning Latin American politicians tend to take an anti-US stance. Many of these governments thus want to reduce their dependence on the United States and see the idea of a common currency for the region as a way of doing this while also bringing about greater political union on the continent. If a Latin American currency union were to come to fruition, it would represent around 5% of global GDP, which compares to the approximately 14% of global GDP that's represented by the euro. Joint currencies are obviously not a new thing, and they tend to boost trade between the countries involved, as they get rid of conversion costs and exchange rate uncertainty. The euro is used in 20 European Union member states and is second only to the US dollar in international reserve holdings. The CFA franc and the East Caribbean dollar are other examples of joint currencies. One downside of common currencies is that they can spread economic shocks between the countries that have adopted them, so we need to look at how that can happen. Latin American politicians have discussed ideas like this for quite a while. The Southern Common Market, known as Mercosur, was set up in 1991 with the idea of promoting free trade and the movement of goods, people, and currency within the member states. It currently works as a customs union between the member countries and has signed free trade agreements with a number of countries around the world, including the EU. 
Argentina's former central bank chief, Sturzniger, who served from 2015 to 2018, was supportive of establishing a central bank among members of the Mercosur countries. Brazil's former finance minister, Guedes, has discussed in the past how a regional common currency would impose fiscal discipline on the region and that there would likely be fewer global currencies in the future, so it would be beneficial if the region had its own. Economists have tended to criticize prior proposals for a joint South American currency, noting that it would tie together several volatile economies with high levels of inflation and debt. The other small joint currencies, like the CFA franc, which is used by some African countries and pegged to the euro, and the East Caribbean dollar, make up a much smaller slice of global economic output, and they do have their problems too. We also have currencies like the Hong Kong dollar, which is pegged to the US dollar, and it works quite well despite there being no strong relationship between the two economies, and I'll come back to that in just a minute. The attractions of a common currency are probably most obvious for Argentina, where the economy is in free fall. Annual inflation in Argentina is approaching 100% as of December, as the central bank prints money to fund spending. It's not so surprising that Argentina might want a more stable currency. Argentina has a very dollarized economy, and that's just what happens in economies where inflation gets really extreme. You can see this happening in Turkey right now, too. In an extreme inflation situation like this, the internal economy moves to trading in some other currency, which could be euros or dollars or something else, but something that has some stability as people lose faith in the national currency. The Argentinian economy has been dollarized for quite some time. For example, if you wanted to make a big purchase, like buying a house in Argentina, you would have to pay in dollars because no one in Argentina would sell their house for Argentinian pesos, as why would you rationally trade a real asset like a house for a rapidly depreciating currency? Similarly, in such situations, contracts begin being written in foreign currency too, as they're too problematic when written in local currency. Brazil, on the other hand, is a functioning economy with a reasonably orthodox central bank. Inflation was high, but they have brought it down. Inflation in Brazil was due to the deficit, as Brazil has quite a lot of debt. Brazilians, as you can imagine, would be quite concerned about being strapped to a country like Argentina that has huge outstanding debt and an extremely volatile economy that's been mostly cut off from international debt markets since it defaulted in 2020. I asked a friend in Brazil what he thought of the proposed currency union. He replied, we have a saying in Brazil about ideas like this. We describe it as the hug between those about to drown. Before we go through the big problems with a currency union between Brazil and Argentina, let me tell you quickly about today's video sponsor, The Daily Upside. If you find yourself sifting through multiple news sources trying to find unbiased and insightful news, The Daily Upside might be the solution to your problem. The Daily Upside is a totally free daily email newsletter written by a team of financial professionals with real industry experience and is read by close to a million investors every day. It's become the first thing I read every morning as it's informative, entertaining, and not dumbed down. They give you the most important news with real analysis. They had an excellent piece a few days ago on this joint currency proposal, which was very helpful in making this video. Whether you're a financial professional or just looking for a great source of business news, The Daily Upside will help. It's totally free to sign up, and they send you one information-filled email every morning. I can't recommend it enough. Sign up using the link in the description below. Okay, so why are economists so dismissive of the idea of this currency union between Brazil and Argentina? 
Well, when you link two currencies, the two countries basically need to have the same interest rates as each other. Otherwise, there would be arbitrage opportunities where you could borrow money in one country at a low interest rate, invest it in bonds in the other country at a high interest rate, and make a risk-free profit because they both use the same currency. Interest rates are very much a function of the economic and business cycle. So for a currency union to work between two countries, the business cycles need to be reasonably aligned. If you have a recession in one country and growth in another, the two countries should have different interest rates. Thus, if you have two countries with very different business cycles and the same interest rates, you'll have a lot of problems. Things will break. When we look at Argentina and Brazil, the two economies are extremely different. Almost the only thing exported from Argentina is food, and Brazil's economy is heavily weighted towards manufacturing and fuel. It would be very difficult for countries like these to have a common currency, as big macro changes would affect each country quite differently, causing big changes in the equilibrium real exchange rate. A big change in the price of oil, for example, would create huge adjustment problems. So why can using one currency work in a big country like the United States, where the individual states might have very different economies, but not work between a group of neighboring countries? This is because within a country there is free movement of labor and capital, and there are fiscal transfers between poor and rich regions. These types of transfers are not controversial within a country, but they would be quite controversial between countries. For this reason, despite their proximity, it would make no sense for the Canadian dollar to be pegged to the US dollar, as Canada has a very resource-driven economy. If there was a natural resources boom or bust, it wouldn't make sense to have the same interest rate in Canada as in the United States, as the interest rates would need to relate to the Canadian economy. The more integrated economies are, the better it can work. In Europe, the various countries have reasonably similar economies, but when there are big differences, fiscal transfers are required, and that can be politically difficult. We saw this in the European debt crisis in 2010, which many people viewed as a conflict between prudent Germany and the irresponsible peripheral countries. This was not really accurate, however. Some of the overheating European economies in the early 2000s and the debt problems that occurred later were driven more by interest rate mismatches between the different European countries. At times in Europe, there are real advantages to being a peripheral economy, as peripheral states receive large capital transfers to maintain regional coherence, along with most of the funds aimed at economic convergence. The core countries in Europe, on the other hand, are counter-cyclical in that they benefit from monetary policies and fiscal policies and can run current account surpluses, meaning that they export more than they import through any downturn. In the downturn, peripheral countries saw a sudden stop of foreign capital coming in and couldn't resort to devaluation due to the common currency. This depressed domestic demand during the crisis within those countries and increased the hardship of the citizens. But getting back to Brazil and Argentina, a currency union can also make a certain amount of sense between economies that are each other's primary trading partners. Despite their geographic proximity, Brazil and Argentina don't trade that much with each other. Argentina only buys 4.2% of Brazil's exports, and Brazil buys only around 15% of Argentina's exports. The benefits that would come from eliminating currency conversion costs would be minimal in such a situation. A big issue for a union like this is that unless labor and capital can move freely between the countries in a currency union, and unless it's set up such that there are large fiscal transfers from wealthier to poorer regions, very different economies like Brazil and Argentina could only share a currency if the less economically active country was willing to accept 
brutally difficult adjustments. We saw this in Europe where the economies have much more in common than Brazil and Argentina do. Whenever there's a regional concentration of economic activity, stresses are going to occur. Essentially, the more integration you have between economies that share a currency, the better currency union can work. The closer you are to acting like one country, where labor and capital can move freely, the better it can be expected to go. In South America, the free movement of labor faces significant obstacles due to anti-immigration policies and visa restrictions within the different countries. In a situation like that, adjustments that would normally occur through changes in the value of the currency would instead occur through surges in unemployment and downward pressure on wages. I mentioned earlier that the Hong Kong dollar is pegged to the US dollar, which might be surprising as there are no real links between the two economies, no fiscal transfers or free movement of labor and capital. But this seems to work just because the two economic cycles are quite similar. Even that is under strain right now though, as Hong Kong's interest rates are much higher than they might naturally be because US rates are high. This demonstrates how an economy has to be willing to endure a certain amount of pain if they're going to tie their economy to another country's business cycle, where there are no fiscal or any other linkages. So as you can see, a plan like this currency union faces a lot of problems, and we've barely touched on the issue of the terrible state of Argentina's economy. Someone joked on Twitter earlier this week that it would be just like Europe, but everyone's Greece. Argentina and Brazil are in very different economic situations right now, though. Argentina has been cut off from international debt markets since its default in 2020 and has tight foreign exchange controls in place. Brazil, on the other hand, has inflation under control. The Brazilian real is fully convertible and Brazil's better grip on government spending means that Brazil, while highly indebted, has full access to international markets. Annual inflation in Argentina, as I mentioned earlier, is close to 100% compared to Brazil's 5.79%, meaning that Argentina has more inflation in a single month than Brazil has in an entire year. The Argentinian economy would need to stabilize significantly before any currency union could ever occur. It's not obvious how Brazil would benefit from such a union anyhow. I discussed the situation with a friend this morning who's an emerging markets expert, and he joked that the only real path towards a currency union right now would be for Brazil to become a basket case economy, and then the two countries could struggle out of their problems together. Otherwise, he saw no chance of this happening at all in the near future. For now, I would argue that this talk of a Latin American currency union is mostly political signaling driven by a general desire to reduce reliance on the United States. If you enjoyed this video, you should watch this one next. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, The Daily Upside, by clicking on the link in the video description. It's a great newsletter that I can firmly recommend. Talk to you again soon. Bye.